All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, I, I have a little bit of time here. I actually left to go pick up my mom. Um, my mother's flying in from Cancun this evening, um, but she just called me and told me to turn back around and come back home because it looks like she's going to be there for a couple of hours. Um, they're stuck in customs. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep an eye on my phone. My mom says she'll call me when she leaves the airport and I'm going to pick her up. Uh, but anyways, um, so I have a little time here. And what I wanted to share was this idea that I've been going over in my head. I was kind of scared to share this, but what gave me the, I guess, inspiration to share the, this um, topic tonight is because I still have my personal journal, but I recently lost my business journal. Um, I left it on top of the roof of my car after this Toastmasters meeting. I was so excited. It was my first meeting and I forgot it was on the roof of my car. I was on the phone with my wife and halfway home, I remembered, I went back, it's gone. Anyways, and I thought that I thought that uh, a few of these ideas that I that actually you know got triggered today because I went through my my journal here, things that I wrote. Um, one of this, one of the entries, I was so glad that I actually put it in this journal and not the other one. So the other journal was more my um, just business ideas and things like that, ideas for TV shows if I ever you know get an opportunity and things like that. But I'm so glad I I actually wrote this down um, because what I wanted to share is. Because uh, I we talked about goals um, in my other live stream, right? We talked about goals and, you know, I, anyways. Oh, and check that out. Isn't that cool? It says ideas become things. Anyways, uh, where I was going with this is um, change takes time and you want to be patient with yourself, right? Uh, I know especially in the beginning when you're grooming and you're learning any skill really, not just dog grooming. It's, it's easy to get, you know, down on yourself and like, why can't I get this, you know? And like, maybe, maybe I'm, maybe something's wrong with my brain. Maybe I, I, I'm just not able to get this, you know? Um, but it just takes time. And I forget when it was, but I remember come, walk, going to work one day feeling different. I just kind of felt like, yeah, I got this. You know, I didn't feel that same anxiety. And it, it took a few years. I think it was like my fifth or sixth year in grooming. Um, and Malcolm Gladwell says that it takes 10,000 hours um, to of focused practice hours where you're trying to get better at your craft. So be patient. Give yourself that time to grow. Um, and also be patient with others. Let them struggle sometimes. Let them make mistakes. The example that I like to give is a butterfly inside the chrysalis when it's struggling to get out. Um, let's say a little boy who loves butterflies, you know, in his eagerness to help, he opens up that chrysalis. Now he's killed that butterfly, really. You know, he, that butterfly needed that time inside there to struggle and, you know, build up that strength and emerge on its own. Um, and then it can't even fly right away. I used to think they just flew right off once they came out of the <laughs> chrysalis, but that's not true either. Monarch butterflies, they, they pump their wings for hours before they're able to fly off. They're strengthening their wings, dry, letting it dry that time. So even when we have gained new skills, sometimes it still takes a little time before we can take flight and take off. So just be patient with yourself. And that's one of my biggest issues is I'm really hard, especially when the <laughs> journal fell off the roof, immediately, almost immediately, as soon as I realized I, I don't have my journal in my car with me and I remembered, oh, it was on the roof of my car, it's probably gone, you know, and then instantly I felt my heart feel oh, oh heavy. And then the thoughts coming in, why are you so stupid? You know, why are, why are you so worthless? Why do you do this? So many? how many times, how many more times, am I, because that's my second journal <laughs> that I left and lost like that. So it's like, how many more journals am I going to have to lose before I finally get it? You know, like, am I, am I stupid or something? You know, these kind of questions. And so I immediately got, I became aware of my thoughts. I became aware of my self-talk. And I asked myself, if the price of the experience I had tonight at that Toastmasters meeting, the people that I met, the things that I learned that night, if the price of that experience was the journal, I had to give up my journal, then it's, it was worth it. You know, and I, I looked at it that way. And I also told myself, how can this experience, how can I become better with using this experience? Well, I can be more understanding with other people when they make mistakes and they act forgetful or do something that maybe they're make you know makes them feel ashamed i can be more understanding of that and not be just so judgmental be more compassionate because i can remember yeah i do stupid stuff all the time right 
So be patient with yourself and that helps you become patient with others. Be curious. Um, I feel like this is key. This helps me um, stay humble by staying curious, you know, by asking questions. Oh, you know, why is it like that? How, how could we do it better? How could I be better? You know, like, how can I learn more? How can I say things better? You know, there's a, did you know that there's a big difference between saying thank you for your patience and thank you for being patient? I didn't know that. There's a very big difference. It's a very subtle, um, you know, all you're saying is one, you know, but thank you for your patience. Saying that to a client, um, thank you for your patience, seems very, it feels like a transaction. You know, it feels very kind of business formal, you know, like you're, like I'm a customer. You're talking to me like I'm a customer. Thank you for your patience. But when you say thank you for being so patient, now it's warm. Now it feels more, you know, like, oh, I am, you're calling me patient. Yeah, thank you for being so patient. And little things like that, I didn't know. But, you know, by being curious, by saying, how can I use my words better? And, you know, things like that by not saying you know so much. So, but being curious by, you know, asking questions, how can I, asking better questions. Tony Robbins says that the quality of our life is, the you know, mostly determined by the quality of the questions we ask ourselves. So rather than ask, why am I so stupid? Because then my mind will immediately start coming up with answers. You know, well, it's because you're always st been stupid and you've always acted stupid. You were raised by a stupid man and he was stupid. And, you know, so you're, you come from a long line of stupid people and now you're going to continue the line and you're perhaps your children even may be stupid, you know, and you go down that negative because I asked, because I asked a negative question, you know, I'm going to come up with negative answers and my life will start to feel negative. But if I ask a better question, not why am I so stupid, but how can I learn things, but how can I learn this better? Or how can I use this experience to become better next time? You know, what can I learn from this experience? Things like that. Asking better questions instead of saying, um, why does my job suck so much? You, we can say, how can I be more engaged in my work? You know, how can I learn to enjoy my job more? And then your brain has to start coming up with answers. Well, I guess I could be nicer to Nancy when I see her in the morning, you know, and I can, I guess I can, you know, like, I guess I can um, have a little bit more, uh, in, enjoy the, uh, in, you know, conversations I have with my clients a little more, you know, like you can, you start coming up with uh, reasons of why you can, how, or how you can enjoy your job more. So by asking better questions, by being curious, um, be helpful. So because change takes time, you know, we have to, we have to pass the time somehow. Um, and here's one thing I wanted to bring up in my journal that I, I forgot about. King David in the Bible, you know, um, David and Goliath. But David, when he was anointed by Samuel um, to be king, it took another 16 years before he actually became king and wore the crown before it became reality, you know, 16 years, God had to test him. He even put Saul in a cave with him and kind of delivered Saul on a platter, hits his head right on a platter, his enemy, and to see what David would do. And King David showed him mercy and he let him go. And he even cut a piece of his cloth to let Saul know, King Saul, you know, I, I, God delivered you in my hand, but I didn't want to kill you. I love you, you know? He showed love to the person who was showing him hate. He developed the character to lead a country, you know, <clears throat> and it took 16 years. <clears throat> so I think that one of my favorite songs growing up was Ray Bolt, uh, Shepherd Boy. And you know, if you're not familiar, it, it actually tells a story. Um, one by one, Jesse's sons stood before the prophet. Their father knew a king would soon be found. Each one passed except the last. No one thought to call him. Surely he would never be a king. But when others see a shepherd boy, God may see a king. Even though your life seems filled with ordinary things. Now up until there, I'm with I'm with the the author, you know, of that song. I I'm I'm 100 percent agree. The next part, though, is where I feel like it's a little misleading. He says, in just a moment, 
he can touch you and everything will change. <laughs> when others see a shepherd boy, God may see a king.